Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
a reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom who are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you, you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. She ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. Yet as for, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them, that he, had, that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the risen Christ, hallelujah. A few months ago, I had to take some old doors to the Habitat Restore here in Hendersonville. So it made sense for me to drop them off during my lunch hour. I drove our old beat-up pickup farm truck that we've had for 20-something years now, And as one does when driving an old beat-up pickup truck, I was listening to one of the local country music stations. (laughs) As I was driving, a song I hadn't heard for quite a while came on, and I turned it up. The song is called The Good Stuff, sung by the cowboy hat and tight tank-top-wearing crooner, the one and only 
Kenny Chesney. As is the case with many country songs, the good stuff is a story. In the song, he starts out by singing about getting into his first fight with his lady and decides to drive, I reckon in an old beat-up pickup truck, around town until he sees the neon lights of some corner dive bar and decides to stop there to drown his pain. He settles up to the bar, realizing that it is just he and the old barkeep in the whole place. The half-asleep barkeeper comes up and asks, what'll it be? And our friend Kenny asks for a glass of the good stuff. And the song goes, he didn't reach around for the whiskey. He didn't pour me a beer. His blue eyes kind of went misty. He said, you can't find that here. And over a glass of milk, the barkeeper goes on to give sage advice on what the good stuff in life is. The first long kiss on a second date. Eating burnt dinners without a fuss that your partner had worked for hours on and asking for seconds to keep them from tearing up. The sight of his wife with bouffant hair, holding their baby daughter for the first time, and the joy of wearing t-shirts that say, I'm a grandpa. The barkeeper describes how difficult it was to watch his wife Bonnie suffer and die from cancer and to hold her hand as the good Lord called her up. He describes his struggle with alcoholism after the death of his beloved wife and the peace he found in recovering, saying, The one thing stronger than the whiskey was all the beautiful memories he had of sharing a life with the person he loved and all the small everyday blessings that they shared. There is no drink, drug, or vice that can measure up to the good stuff. The song ends with the barkeeper encouraging the broken young man to go home. He said, when you get home, she'll start to cry. When she says, I'm sorry, say, so am I. And look into those eyes so deep in love and drink it up. Because that's the good stuff. So here I am, listening to this song, driving through the streets of downtown Hendersonville in a beat up old pickup truck dressed like a priest in my collar and black clothes, just weeping, <laughs> like ugly crying. And yes, it is true, beneath the rugged and manly exterior that you see today, Betsy, stop laughing, lies a hopeless romantic that is easily brought to tears by sappy country songs. And I'm sure the people next to me in traffic were thoroughly confused by the spectacle that I made of myself that day. Now, I think that perhaps the reason why I was so struck with the lyrics of this song was it was, at that time, a needed example of times in our lives when we go somewhere expecting to encounter something and leave with something far better. The good stuff. Hope. Here we are on Easter. Scripture tells us that Mary Magdalene had come to the tomb. John's gospel account does not tell us exactly why Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. However, Mark and Luke both report that the women who had stayed by Jesus' side through thick and thin had gone to the tomb to finish anointing the body of Jesus. This would have been culturally appropriate, and we can imagine that paying these final respects to a person whom they love so deeply would have been incredibly difficult to do. Yet Mary Magdalene encounters something unthinkable. All four gospel accounts tell us that she witnessed Jesus' crucifixion and burial. John notes that she stood by the cross. She walked with him through life, death, and burial. She saw it all. How shocking must it have been for her to encounter the empty tomb. She runs to tell the disciples what she had found. Peter and the other disciple, generally thought to be John, the evangelist, also witnesses the empty tomb, the burial linens and cloth empty and rolled up. And although they did not understand that in order to fulfill the scripture that Christ must, die from the must rise from the dead, they believed. Despite encountering the incomprehensible, we are told that the seeds of belief that had been planted 
were beginning to spring forth and flower. They went to the tomb expecting to encounter what I can only guess they thought was a defiled grave and left with something completely different. They left with the good stuff. They left with hope. And ever the loyal friend and follower, Mary Magdalene, stays at the tomb, and peering inside, she sees two angels who ask her why she was weeping. They know what she would soon come to see, that she was to be witness to the most important, important event in the history of the world, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ appears there and once again asks why she is weeping. But the resurrection of Christ is so inconceivable that Mary doesn't even recognize him at first. It isn't until he calls out her name that she understands who and what stands before her. God, the Son, crucified, died, buried, and resurrected to ascend into glory with God the Father. And Jesus instructs her to tell the disciples what she had seen, but to understand that God's ultimate act of love requires that Christ must finally ascend to heaven and not to hold on to the man that she had known before. Mary had gone to the tomb expecting to pay her respects as she moved through her seasons of grief. Yet she left the tomb having experienced something infinitely more awesome and beautiful. The good stuff. Hope. And here we find ourselves gathered today in this beautiful and historic church. We drove past flowering plants, trees, and bushes. Animals are returning to increased activity after the long winter months. We see butterflies, and we hear birds flying overhead, traveling thousands of miles in their annual journey of new life. Creation itself conspires to celebrate the hope and promise of new life. We gather here today to celebrate along with creation the promise and hope of new life in the risen Christ. We gather in church today with a vast array of stories and experiences. Some of us come today having experienced the birth of new children in our lives recently. Some of us come today having experienced the death of loved ones, children included. Some come with doubt and fear. Some with a sense of grace and peace. There are people amongst us who have troubling health diagnoses. Some have received good news. Our organist DeWitt thankfully survived a terrible car accident and is with us today. And after a restless week and a half, I was extremely relieved when my doctor told me that I do not have skin cancer. We are here because we are always here. And we are here because this is our first time at St. John. And we come to experience the transformation of living with and in Christ. We are here after our journey in Lent, having prepared for the roller coaster ride of Holy Week with penitent and contrite hearts. Yet if we seek to encounter God simply to feel better, you may find that that isn't what God serves here. God's love offers so much more. We are here to encounter something that only the love of God can give. We are here to encounter the good stuff, hope. We also leave here today having participated in the joy of Easter and the possibility of new life, transformed life, new love, new hope. God calls us to join with all of creation to bless and celebrate the risen Lord. Before we go into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, we will reaffirm our faith. We will greet one another in peace. And we will sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Before we leave here, we will participate in the Eucharist, the meal of bread and wine, elements from creation, 
water, grapes, and wheat, transformed by yeast, heat, and time, is then transformed by the Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of the risen Christ, that we may live in him and he in us. And regardless of who you are, what you bring with you today, or, what, or even what you may have expected to encounter today, May we leave having experienced something vastly more beautiful and powerful than any other force in the universe. The good stuff. Hope. The love of God is in you. The light of the risen Christ shines through you. We have hope. Now go share that hope with all the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Please be seated. Happy Easter. It is such a gift to be gathered with you all today. I'm Father Josh Stevens, the rector here at St. John in the Wilderness, and what a joy it is to step into the good stuff with you this morning. Um, if you are new or you're visiting and you're looking for a church home, we'd love to get to know you better. There are cards in your pews which you could fill out now and put in the offering plate as it comes around, and then we'll give you a call and uh, tell you a little bit more about St. John and lo- learn more about you as well. Um, I'd like to welcome Kevin Young and Kevin Kimbrough, our guests. Uh, musicians here. Thank you all so much for being with us this morning. Our Easter offering today, uh, every year we have a a, a grace-filled discipline of giving away uh, our offerings on Christmas, on Good Friday, on Easter. And so our Easter offering this year will go to support the Episcopal Church, the Diocese in Jerusalem, which serves Gaza, Palestine, Israel, Jordan, Amman, the whole Middle East, huge presence there, hospitals, orphanages, schools, parishes. So any uh, loose offering, cash in the plate, or any checks that say Easter offering or online donations that indicate that uh, will go uh, over to uh, the Episcopal Church there. And our own Bill Taylor is headed over there in about a week uh, to provide encouragement to Christians. So we will send word of our gift uh, with him and bless him next week uh, before he makes his journey. Um, Looking ahead, just a few brief things. Next week, we have our world-famous parish breakfast. (laughs) So join us in the parish hall at about 10 o'clock for the Chefs of St. John special feast there. And uh, you'll find uh, uh, the second to last page of the bulletin or so, there's a couple of really neat offerings that I'd like for you to join us for. Uh, Friends of Music is putting on a theatrical uh, performance, arranging it with uh, a really talented friend here of DeWitt, Susan King, who will portray Emily Dickinson for about an hour, The Bell of Amherst. This is really the work of a lifetime as a a student and a professor of theater. Um, So that'll be April 21st, Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. in the Parish Hall. And then our Empty Bowls fundraiser, which is the most beautiful uh, way of supporting local kids who are hungry and families, that's coming up on May 19th. And I hope you'll buy tickets for that. Uh, You'll receive a, a handmade bowl and you'll come and enjoy soup with us. Um, for, uh, for that special fundraiser on May 19th. So just a few special things. You can find out about everything that's going on, the, the richness of our life together, the Easter life we share uh, on our website or in the newsletter that just came out. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord.
As the offering comes forward, I invite the children to come and to gather around the altar with us for the Eucharistic feast. And parents can come with them if children need accompaniment. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day and beholding the glory of your presence. They offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. 
When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks... He gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us. And upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Jose, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Francis, Bishop of Rome, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember Elaine, Joe, Tina, Lindsay, Tawana, Mary, and Dottie. Mary Louise, Christopher, and Jan. Joanne, Tom and Anna, Jean, Loretta, Betsy, Margaret and Catherine, John, Michael, Jim and Charles, Anne, Hal and Herb, Jenny, Emma, Jane and Ann, Tracy, EJ, Pat, Jeff, Harriet, Jim, Susan and Ann, Eric, Lynn, Becky, Kat, Rick, Bob, Sandy and Jeannie and those we name now in our hearts or aloud. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, especially Marilyn Owen and Newell Doty, whose faith is known to you alone, and bring them into that place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, With St. John and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past, we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, 
All honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. 
working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always.